Good morning, everybody. I am still staying with my friend for the night. I'm about to go make some avocado toast. Then I'm gonna hit the road and we're gonna head to Iowa. Um, I came out here literally just to film this because it would be weird to start my homeless vlog inside a house, so. So we got bread yesterday. The thing is, we don't actually have a toaster. We have an air fryer. And so we get to figure out how to turn an air fryer into a toaster. Take that back. Apparently this thing is able to make toast. Yeah, toast. Tomatoes. Cutting board, fantastic. I just wanna show you guys, this is the difference between a sharp knife and a dull knife. You can like actually see the difference in the thickness of the tomato. Our first attempt at using the air fryer to make toast has failed. So generally for avocado toast, you get your toast like we're doing there. We're gonna take some ripe avocados, mush them up, cut some tomato, and then you take the toast, put the toast, avocado, tomatoes, salt, pepper, maybe some spice. On the second try, it looks like hot air is capable of burning bread. That's good to know. Breakfast for dinner is fine, but dinner for breakfast gets judged. So yes, Lisa, thank you for letting us use your makeshift toaster. Okay, breakfast is over. We're gonna go hit the road again. We have like 10 hours to get to Iowa. So we're gonna have a bunch more driving montages in this video. Actually, let's get gas first. Can I get this and uh, $40 on pump 16? You gotta be careful getting drinks like this from a gas station because they way overcharge you. Like this was, this was $2 a piece. $2 for one of these things. And that was when you bought two. If you bought just one, this would be more than $2. <sighs> it is getting really cold outside. Like it is, whew. I wanna get inside my car where it's warm, really fast. It's going so slowly, hurry up. Grr, okay, let's go, I'm freezing. I would show you guys, but you can't see through the windshield. It is starting to snow. I think this is the first snow of the winter, actually, yeah. I picked a great time to decide to live in my car, didn't I? Okay, at this point, I can barely see, like, one car in front of me. Okay, yeah, this is not a thing. I'm not even gonna try driving in this. This is just asking for problems. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try. So, we are gonna go chill in Starbucks. Wow. My car looks great though. I love my car so much. Oh. <laughs> I wonder how this wrap is gonna hold up when it's frozen. I mean, I really hope they're open. Oh, good. Check it out, they have an outlet. So I can get my laptop. That's what we're gonna go do. This has all happened within the past like 30 minutes. Okay, so basically I'm not sure how long this is gonna last, so we wanna take all of our electronics in there, get them charged up just to make sure that we have electricity in the future. Also, a good pro tip, if you ever wanna like loiter in a Starbucks or McDonald's or whatever, they'll probably throw you out after like an hour or two if you're just sitting there on your phone or whatever. But if you have a laptop in front of you and you look like you're working on a laptop, they'll let you stay there as long as you want. Laptops are like your key to loitering. I'm not gonna lie, it sort of feels like I'm back in Europe because this is what I used to do in Europe. Okay, make sure everything's closed, locked up. Lock, good. Hello, can I get a large hot chocolate? They are super behind because it's obviously full of people right now. So we're just gonna sit here and get to work. Oh my, no, this is so good. While I'm here, I might as well do some work, uh, because I can. Let's go. Like, it's still snowing really badly, but it's not as windy. It's not as like, it doesn't look like there's a fog in front of you. It's clear, it's just snowing. Maybe it'll be safe, who knows? This is the first time I've seen snow in a long time, honestly. It seems my check engine light just came on and I'm not entirely sure why, so let's find out. I have one of these Bluetooth OBD2 scanners, so this will be able to read the computer and tell me exactly what's going on and find out if it's a non-issue. So you can see here that it says my catalytic converter is below its threshold. That means my catalytic converter might be like stopped up with like snow or it's cold or something. It's not a drivability concern, it's just like an emissions concern. Um, meh. 
So we are actually gonna go try to drive through this. Find out what happens, you know? This actually isn't that bad. Uh, the heavy snow stopped, now it's just like a light flurry. I can still see ahead of me. The road is basically like it would be if it was raining. It's wet, but it's not, it's not terrible. Uh, I've only seen like two trucks pulled over on the side of the road because they couldn't drive anymore, so haven't seen any pileups. My standard for whether or not it's safe to drive is how many pileups have you seen, I guess. I'm not gonna lie, I am really, really glad I got these new tires. I am so much more confident in my car's ability to stay on the road without skidding because of them. I can't imagine trying to do this trip without these tires or with the tires that I had on before. Those things were like 15 years old. They were from 2007. There was construction and now we're getting rerouted like through downtown Indianapolis. It's super pretty though. Okay, so we have some bad news. My check engine light just came on again and I can hear my engine misfiring. My engine is misfiring right now. I can't like push it full throttle. Otherwise my engine starts stuttering. So typically I would just go get out of my car, look into it. I'm pretty sure I know what the problem is, but it's snow. We're in the middle of a snowstorm right now. So that's not great. Fuck. One of the things you can use for diagnosing a misfire like this is see what happens when your car isn't being pushed very hard. Like right now, we're just going basically at idle, we're cruise control, and my car is not misfiring. That means that this is probably a problem with my spark plugs, spark plug wires, or my uh, inductor coils. Just because everything is fine right now, but it only starts having a problem when I push it to the floor and I go full throttle. So what I'm gonna do, rather than just pulling over and trying to fix this immediately, I'm going to keep driving. I am pretty sure that the problem is my inductor coil. I already had a problem with one of them earlier and rather than replacing all of them, I only replaced one. So it looks like the other ones are starting to fail now too. As long as my car works at like regular speeds, I'm fine. I just won't go full throttle for the drive home. It's a, it's a kind of rare component. I might not be able to just walk into like an auto zone and pick it off the shelf. I might need to order this offline. Long story short, I'm pretty sure my car still works. I'm pretty sure it will still get me the 500 miles we need to drive. Um, but we'll need to do some investigating when we get where we're going. You know what, no, actually, we're gonna use this as an opportunity to show you guys how to diagnose problems in your own car. Let's pull over and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we are going to use this scanner again. We're gonna scan the computer and figure out exactly why the engine was misfiring. You can see here from this scan that the computer is saying that cylinder six is the problem. So we're gonna go take a look at that. But before we do, I need to go to the bathroom and I wanna show you guys what American truck stops are like. Oh, you can also see it stopped snowing, so it's safe to drive now. Now, a truck stop is like a gas station, except it's tailored toward people who basically live on the road. So it's like a gas station with a lot more amenities. Obviously, you can get gas in them, but they also tend to have like full kitchens. They're connected to other restaurants. They've got a bunch of like car related stuff, uh, inverters, cigarette port outlets, lots of mobile charging, things that you would need for your car. And of course, there's bathrooms. The coolest thing about them though, is you can do laundry and you can take showers here. So if you're living on the road and you need some place to do laundry, these places are great. You can take a shower while you do it. Of course, lots of your car, truck related things. In terms of food, I think that we are gonna get one of these. This is a potato, egg, and cheese taco. Okay, let's go eat and then go diagnose that engine. Truck stops are super cool. You can sleep here. If you're like on the road and you don't want to drive through the night, you can just come into the parking lot and sleep. They won't bother you. The only thing is that their stuff can be a little bit more expensive. Like for these two burrito looking things, this was like $6. That's where they get their money from. That's how they support themselves is by charging a little bit extra on the stuff that they do provide. It's kind of funny. Truck stops, they've got like a negative reputation over the years for being like these seedy places and all of this stuff is gross. I love truck stops. American trucks, truck stops are the best. Let's take a look at the food. Let's see. Let's see if the if they're worth the praise that I'm giving them. They called this a taco. This is not a taco. This is a burrito. You can see the steam coming from it. Let's see if you can. Lots of steam. Mm. You can see the chunks of potato and cheese. Very hot. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, McDonald's has better quality burritos for cheaper, um, but this isn't bad. This is a perfectly reasonable, reasonable meal from a truck stop. Anyway, back to diagnosing the engine. 
Now we remember from the scan that cylinder six was the problem. When you get problems with misfiring like this at high RPMs, it's typically because your spark plugs are broken, your spark plug wires are broken, or the distributor packs are broken. Now I've already replaced all of the wires and the spark plugs, so that means that it's probably one of these. I've already replaced this one because it was giving me the exact same problem, and this fixed it. So I know that these two are very old. I am guessing that the problem is that I need to replace this distributor pack. This is the thing that takes the 12 voltage from this and makes it a much higher voltage so that you can actually get the spark in the spark plug. I'm pretty sure that replacing this will fix the problem. The only problem is, is that that's a kind of rare part. You can't just like walk into a regular auto zone and have it. I might need to have that shipped to me, but my car still runs right now. So I think we're gonna try to continue the trip. I am meeting a friend and I want to be there by like 8 p.m., maybe 9 p.m. So we've got about six-ish hours of driving left. We've already been driving for four hours. Time flies when you're just like enjoying yourself. We are now officially in Illinois. We are actually gonna take a stop at one of these rest areas. Um, I feel like I'm kind of falling asleep at the wheel. Probably not a good thing, but I woke up really early, so we're just gonna stop, take a quick nap, and then start driving again. It is also starting to snow again, which means that we get to avoid that if we take a nap now. We get to see what the roads are like in the future. Oh, it is so freaking cold. There we are. Look at this, rest areas are fantastic. Oh, look at this, they've also got outlets. So like you need to like charge something like a toothbrush or yeah, free electricity. One of the best heaters you have when you're living in your car is your own body. And one of the best ways to get your body heating things is to eat. It's called the thermic effect of food, but basically eating makes you warm. Mm. Nap time. We gotta go real fast because it is so cold outside. Another one of the reasons I tinted my windows, aside from just privacy, is they reflect infrared. So that will keep my, uh, my car slightly warmer because my heat is not escaping through the windows. Now, if I wanted to stay warm, I could run my engine. I could run my engine and have the heat come into the cabin, but that's really expensive because the gas for this car is not cheap. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna mine cryptocurrency. See, I have a lot of battery packs in my car with a lot of energy in them. I could just hook up like one of those small little heaters and have that heat my car. The thing is, that would be wasteful if I could do exactly the same thing with my laptop and actually get paid for it. There we go, you can see that this is mining right now and this is connected to this battery pack. So we're gonna take all of this electricity and we are going to convert it to heat. There we go, now I've got a heater facing directly toward me while I watch YouTube and go to sleep. And for anybody that might ask in the comments, I did do the MacBook mod on this. If you know, you know. I will catch up with you guys in a little bit, but it'll be probably dark by the time we leave. So, um, yeah, good night. Oh, wow. I just slept for three hours without even blinking. <clears throat> it's not even cold in here anymore. Honestly, we are just gonna go hit the road. Yeah. <clears throat> Gotta get our shoes on. And then hop into the front seat. Oh, it's locked. Oh, okay, on to Iowa, let's go. <laughs> okay, actually, before we go ripping out of here, it's a good idea to let your car warm up a little bit, especially when it's cold like this, because that is what does the most damage to your engine, is when you go really hard on it, when it's changing between cold to hot, that's when it's most susceptible to damage. So you wanna let it warm up, that way you can just beat on it. It wants gas. Gas, gas, gas. Gas, gas, gas. These things are so fucking annoying. Holy shit. Oh, look at that. They have pizza here. <laughs> Check it out, we got the last pizza. Looks like it's pepperoni. <laughs> okay. My mirror is frozen. Good, good. $71 to fill my tank. This is why I don't run my engine to stay warm. Jesus Christ. Yeah, at $70 a tank, I cannot afford to just let my engine run all night. Not a thing. This pizza only costs $4.
It looks a little bit more like a quiche than a pizza, but let's give it a shot. Oh, it's so hot. Good. Yeah, no, I'm still getting the I'm still getting quiche vibes. Not good. I'm throwing it away. Not good at all. Oh my, not good. Bad pizza aside, let's hit the road. These are still the same ones from this morning. Check it out. We are about to pass the largest truck stop in the world. Um, it's actually huge. They've got like their own dentist, their own chiropractor. It's absolutely massive and it's in Iowa. I would stop, but I'm on a deadline. Eventually someday I will show you guys the largest truck stop in the world. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. Um, let's find parking. Okay, we have now driven over a thousand miles, over 18 hours of drive time, and I've decided that I think I know what my favorite feature of my car is. Let me show you this. Do you see this right here? This is a switch that controls the heated seats. I'm not sure if you noticed, but it's really cold outside. Do you know how nice it is to be able to sit in this thing and just like have it give you like a warm hug? Oh, heated seats are my favorite. This is so nice. Yeah, I think I stole your parking spot. Uh, tell everybody hi. Hi. This is Samantha. You might remember her from like last year. I uh, left my sleeping bag in my car. Open. You weren't kidding, God. You weren't kidding. Samantha is generous enough to let me spend the night in her place tonight. <laughs> okay, they're letting me sleep on their couch. Um, tomorrow we are going to try to fix the distributor pack. We're gonna go look at the wrap, make sure that the wrap is not destroyed. I haven't actually inspected that yet. And I think that's it. We're gonna fix the car and then we're gonna fix the wrap.